My name is Mohammed Noor. I'm a professor at uh, Duke University in the biology department. I grew up in Hampton, Virginia, and I went to school at the College of William and Mary. When I went to college, I took intro bio, and actually I wasn't that crazy about it, and I actually decided for a while I was going to major in psychology. Uh, and I put off till my junior year taking a particular class that was in genetics. And when I took that class, I loved it. I just mm -hmm. absolutely loved it. I said, wow, this is really cool. So the next year, or sorry, the next semester, I took a class in evolutionary genetics. I liked that even more. And at that point, I was hooked. <laughs> I was at College of William Mary for undergrad, mm -hmm. uh, and I did some research there that actually was not really related to anything I'm doing now at all, but uh, I was working on a particular caterpillar, uh, Biston betularia, which actually grows up to be the mm -hmm. peppered moth. If you grow them on willow, they turn green. If you grow them on birch, mm -hmm. they turn brown. Oh. So my undergrad research was trying to figure out whether it's diet or vision and how far into development can, can you go before they can switch from green to brown. I went to grad school at the University of Chicago, and that's when actually I started working on, on uh, Drosophila on fruit flies. So education-wise, I went on from Chicago and finished my PhD there, and I went to do a postdoc at Cornell. And I got my first job at Louisiana State University in Baton Rouge. I was there for seven years, and I've been here since 2005. Nice. So, so we, have, we have a lot of parallel research programs. I'm an evolutionary geneticist, so I try to understand what are the, gene what are the genetic changes associated with major evolutionary processes. So one thread of research I've had from the very beginning is trying to understand the genetic changes it takes to make a new species. So for example, you know, you can say that we're 98, 99% similar to a chimpanzee. Why is it that we are human and they are chimpanzee? Why is it that we don't interbreed with them and make, and make offspring with them, things like that? Mm -hmm. So to do that, we use uh, very closely related fruit fly species because we can force them to interbreed and to look and see like what are, what are the gene combinations that cause hybrid sterility, for example. or what are the, what's the genetic basis of the female preference in one species to mate with males of its own mm -hmm. uh, to male, mate to mate with males of its <laughs> own species? So that it is the origin of biodiversity on the planet. Mm -hmm. People talk about conserving biodiversity. Speciation, that process, is actually what makes biodiversity. Right. So in that sense, it's fundamental to everything we see. To just understand what it actually takes right. to make okay. species, maybe have a couple of specific examples where we can say, this is what it took to go from ancestor to species A and species B. Mm -hmm. I would love to see that. Yeah. I mean, I enjoy the research itself. I like the question. It's intellectually stimulating. But mm -hmm. honestly, my favorite part of doing it all is interactions with my lab group. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's by far the, the thing I enjoy the most. I love just sitting down with my lab group and brainstorming about things and, and just being a part of their lives. And we're all just working as a team on this, mm -hmm. on this interesting question. So, so uh, I can think of one that's probably around the year 2000 where we've been trying to study the genetic, again, trying to study the genetic basis of these, of these traits that are associated with making new species. And, mm -hmm when we were we were mapping all these traits to particular parts of the of the genome of these species and everything mapped to the same places but they're associated with with literally flips in the chromosomes of these inversions which actually initially we've just found that as a nuisance like we can't mm -hmm. narrow things down because they're just associated with this massive flip in the chromosomes mm -hmm. but eventually thinking about it and talking with people about it, we actually came up with the idea that maybe those flips in the chromosomes are actually part of the cause for what's allowing uh, these new species right. to form so we actually made this model that was published in 2001, suggesting how that could happen. Mm -hmm. And that's something like, since that time, we've continued to work on that. And it seems like the model was at least largely, if not completely, really true. So mm -hmm. we actually got really lucky that, yeah. that this ended up being you know, a, a pretty big finding. Okay. I mean, the field, that's not a scientific debate, though. I mm -hmm. mean, within science, everybody agrees with that. I guess right. the, there's a lot of debates in terms of you know, what are the specific forces that are causing evolution to occur, like okay. how much of it is natural selection, how much of it is random processes. These are some of the debates that have been around for a very long time. Mm -hmm. They're kind of, in some sense, they're kind of silly because the answer is always some of both. Right. But people still debate it like, but is it, is it 80, 20 or 20, 80 this mm -hmm. way? And, okay. and it's kind of silly at some level, like right. it doesn't really matter. I mean, right. it's useful to know, but it's not that important. Just discovery, like, yeah. you know, that the, there's something you completely don't know Mm -hmm. And you can be, you yourself can be like the person, first person to figure this out and tell everybody else about it. And it's just really exciting. Right, yeah. Yeah, I love okay. it. Oh, go science. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>